A very good morning, Dr. Naidu. Just first of all, what is polycystic ovary syndrome and who is most prone to it? Good morning, ladies. It's lovely to be on here. So polycystic ovarian syndrome, or PCOS as we call it for short, is a genetic hormonal metabolic syndrome that affects many women of reproductive age. It is estimated about 10% of the female population does have polycystic ovarian syndrome. And we like to put it down to a one in 10 women will have PCOS. Dr. Naidu, according to a study, about 82% of women have PCOS and don't even know that they have it. Why is it? Why is it so difficult to diagnose or to find? Is it a matter of not having symptoms? Why is it that 82% of women can have PCOS and not know it? Well, it all boils down to whether they are getting regular checkups and whether they know that they actually have a hormonal disorder going on. So the three key symptoms that we look for when diagnosing PCOS is that you have to meet two of these three criteria and the first one being irregular periods. Now an irregular period is anything that is less than 21 days or more than 35 days. So to put it down to simple terms, if you have a period every two to three months, well, that is an irregular period and you should get checked up. The next feature we look for is either clinical or biochemical changes or elevation in androgen levels. Now, androgen levels are basically your male type of hormones. And we look for clinical features such as hair growth on the chin or upper lip, the chest area as well as the tummy area, as well as acne, which most women are prone to. And the third and final type, and this is where the name polycystic ovarian syndrome comes from, is ultrasound evidence of polycystic ovaries, which is basically cysts which are filled with fluid within your ovaries. So, so what are the dangers of PCOS if left untreated? Well, there are many different conditions that can result if you do not get your PCOS under checked or if you have not been diagnosed with PCOS. One being heart conditions, the second being type 2 diabetes, next being mental disorders such as depression and anxiety which we see very commonly as well as obesity which is definitely on the rise at the moment all right so there, are, there is no cure at the moment for PCOS but you say that there are certain treatments that one can undergo so if I am a woman who suspects that I might possibly have PCOS what would you advise me to do Firstly, I would definitely tell you, it is a change in lifestyle. You have to change your lifestyle in order to, meet, to manage PCOS symptoms very well. The second being herbal medicine, homeopathic medicine works so beautifully for treating PCOS in a natural way without any side effects. The next thing is that you can start exercising. This is absolutely critical in the PCOS healing journey, as well as supplement intake. Supplements that contain myo inositol, alpha lipoic acid, as well as folic acid, have shown to actually reduce insulin resistance, which is a major game player in PCOS, because once you have insulin resistance, you decrease your chances of ovulation as well as you put on weight and you are most likely to get type 2 diabetes. Very quickly, Dr. Naidu, if someone, for example, doesn't quite understand homeopathy, why would you suggest taking that route, the homeopathic route, rather than the more normal, well, not normal, but the more popular methods? Okay, so I was diagnosed with PCOS at the tender age of 13, and I have gone through all of the protocols, both allopathic 
and natural in order to treat my symptoms. And the natural route has definitely, definitely outweighed the allopathic route in that my PCOS is completely under control. And this I tested via my blood results. So it definitely, definitely helps. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Karusha Naidu, for your insights. We'll leave it there.